Hey everyone! So I am finally back off holiday and I am back to working and making videos. Um, and I am back in the sweltering heat of London. This is absolutely ridiculous how warm this is. It was so nice to be up in the Lake District for a week and we actually had rain. I miss that. I never thought I'd miss rain, but I do. I, I had an amazing week. You might have seen a bunch of my photos over on Instagram. I'm posting way too many, but it was the most beautiful place. Uh, we did some really exciting stuff like Go Ape, which was like this treetop adventure where you do all this like climbing and swinging from ropes and zip lines. It's so much fun. We visited a castle slash stately home and, and we went on some amazing walks and it was just, it was the best week and I had such a good time and I really needed that break to just kind of like recharge and I feel all refreshed now and ready to kind of like tackle work again. And that and that kind of actually brings me on to the topic of today's video. So as you guys know, I, I feel quite strongly about, um, I, I guess you could say like kind of talking about um, sort of mental health issues and kind of promote people to really get help when they need it. It's something that I've wanted to speak about for a while, but I've not quite felt ready before now. But now I feel like I'm kind of ready to tackle some really big important topics. And today I want to talk specifically about depression and anxiety. And we're going to be looking at a video from the Psychic Twins. It's kind of a response to that video because they have a video titled, let me just check this, Win Over Depression 16 Tips. And I found this video and I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe the Psychic Twins have finally done something great. But watching the video, it kind of made me really angry. So we're going to be looking at this video today whilst also having a look at some really good positive advice for how if you have issues like depression or anxiety, how you can help yourself and get help in the future. Hopefully it will be a video that's both helpful and entertaining, which is what I try and do here. <laughs> but we're just gonna kind of like jump into it and see what happens. Before we get started, I just wanna thank BetterHelp for supporting this video and my channel. They're an online therapy site which offer you access to licensed therapists online as and when you need them. They're absolutely amazing and I love what they're doing, but I'll tell you more about them in a minute when we get to the whole therapy part of the video. First, we're gonna be having a look at this Psychic Twins video. And the thing that really annoys me is that this is apparently a video to help you win over depression. Um, but they spend the first seven minutes of this very long video just like rambling about nothing. There's there's no substance there. There's nothing to help anyone. It's just them like, if anything, they're just glamorizing depression. And this is something that really, really gets to me. Because I've said it before, mental health issues are not glamorous. They're not exciting. They're not fun. And it's not something you should ever present in that way. As someone who's had issues with depression and anxiety in the past, I can tell you that it's not fun, it's not glamorous, it's not nice. And I think to present them as anything other than a struggle to be overcome is, is potentially dangerous, to be honest. Kate Spade, Avicii, Chester Bennington, Chris Cornell, all the recent celebrity suicides remind us that no matter how successful you are, wealthy you are, famous, loved, appear to be happy, it cannot prevent you from taking your own life. You know, we ourselves have struggled our whole lives with depression and anxiety, and we've been open about that. Some of the celebrities who have dealt with anxiety and depression uh, over the past 20 or 30 years are, well, Demi Lovato. Uh, she checked into treatment in 2010 for bipolar disorder, bulimia and anorexia, wow. and she has since become a very, very powerful advocate for mental health. In fact, I think she's even part owner of the rehab center. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has suffered with depression. Britney Spears has had crippling anxiety, and that led to her highly publicized breakdown in 2000. Johnny Depp, um, some people may not realize that he suffered from severe anxiety for many, many years, and he actually has therapists on the set with him who can coach him through an anxiety attack when he gets them, and they come pretty frequently. So the first seven minutes, they basically list off all these celebrities who've had like depression and anxiety issues, right? And they they say that they're listing these off to say like, oh, no matter how successful you are, you can struggle with these issues too. And I think that's a very good point to raise. Anyone can have mental health issues and it doesn't, you know, say anything about your life, your life choices, uh, where you are. You can be in a really successful job and have depression. You can be unemployed and have depression. Like, it affects everyone and anyone. I think that's a really important point to raise. However, the way they do it makes it seem like, almost like it's something to aspire to. Like, oh, Johnny Depp had depression. So can you. I don't know. It's, just, it's the way they talk about it that really gets me. It's like, instead of a warning, they are glamorizing it. They talk about how Johnny Depp has therapists on set and Demi Lovato owns her own clinic. Almost as though that's something you should aspire to be doing as well. I just think they're going about introducing this topic in completely the wrong way, especially when they have such a young and impressionable audience. A lot of the people watching them are teenagers. And I think you have to be very careful, especially when you're talking to like vulnerable people about things like this, that you don't influence them the wrong way, if that makes sense. 
I mean, yes, it's important to talk about the fact that mental health is issues can affect everyone, including the rich and famous, but it's like the way they talk about it just glosses over the horrible stuff and just romanticizes the idea. Please don't talk about it like that. It just, it really undermines the seriousness of the problem. I also feel a bit like they're exploiting things like celebrity suicide and celebrity health issues, but again, it just makes me uncomfortable. Anyway, these first like seven minutes or so aside, they then go on to try and offer some like actual tips to how um, people with depression and a little bit of anxiety, but mostly depression, how they can help kind of like overcome this, how they can help themselves. And I think, again, it's a very important topic. It's something that um, people need to talk about more. And I think they, they say that they've had issues with depression in the past. And I think people talking about their real life experiences and what helped them can be absolutely fantastic. I think it's a very important thing to talk about. But again, I just, I don't like some of their tips. I think some of them are probably a little bit damaging, but we're gonna be looking at these in a little bit more detail and I'm gonna be offering some of my advice. And again, it's take it or leave it. A lot of the time you have to kind of figure out what works best for you and what doesn't. And some of the things that helped me aren't gonna help everyone else but if I can kind of give you another option or another way of looking at things, then I think that's a kind of helpful, positive thing, hopefully. Number one, focus on the present moment. What can you do right now to feel better? So this annoys me as a first tip because it's so basic. It's like, okay, that's all you're, all you're gonna say. You're just gonna say it, gloss over it, move on. It's like they don't even understand what they're saying. I feel like they're reading off a list that someone else has written and that really annoys me. It, it, uh, it does make me angry. Sorry, I'm like watching the video down here on my phone, but like it does make me angry because you ask anyone who is depressed or maybe in the middle of an anxiety attack or a panic attack or whatever, um, I've had plenty of those and they're not nice. But you ask anyone who's like in the kind of throes of depression or anxiety or whatever and you ask those people, what can you do right now to feel better? And the answer's probably gonna be, oh my god, nothing, I feel terrible, nothing's gonna help, everything is awful. So I feel like just saying like, oh, well, what can you do right now to feel better? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's just kind of glossing over the seriousness of it and it's almost like they don't really understand it, which is weird because they say they've been through this, but I don't know. If it was as simple as just like knowing what you can do in the moment to feel better, then no one would have mental health problems because we'd just be like, oh, okay, yeah, now I know. It's like you ask yourself these questions hundreds of times a day and you don't know the answer. So I think that's a stupid bit. However, I do think the whole focusing on the present moment thing is really helpful. I'm a big kind of believer in mindfulness as a kind of technique for helping with depression and anxiety and I think it can be really fantastic. I, th I think mindfulness is an interesting one because some people do say that it has like these links to sort of pseudoscience and I guess you can see it that way but there are actual kind of like um, neuroscientific reasons behind why it works and that's what I think is a really important thing to focus on. So to this, I would say if you're ever feeling kind of like lost and alone, if you're ever feeling down, if you're ever feeling empty, if you're ever feeling like you're having a panic attack, if you feel like your mind is racing at 100 miles an hour and you're, you don't know what to do and you just have this like pressure building in your head and you feel like, Ugh. if you feel like any of that, one of my big bits of advice is to just stop and breathe for a moment. Concentrate on everything around you and really focus on that present moment. And, and this is basically what mindfulness is, right? You, you just sit or stand for a moment wherever you want and just concentrate on your breathing. Deep breaths in and out. Really focus on each breath going in and each breath going out. Focus on what you can see around you, the tiny little details that you wouldn't normally notice. Focus on the little sounds going on in the background. Focus on what you can smell. Focus on what you can feel. Can you feel the grass beneath your feet? Do you feel your bed? Do you feel a settee? Like, focus on those tiny little textures. It sounds really silly, but this is a great, great technique I found, especially when I felt a panic attack coming on and I could feel my heart racing. I could feel my breath catching in my throat. I could feel the pressure in my head was like building up and it felt like a screaming in my head. When I felt like that, I would just try and try and remind myself to take a minute and stop. And you just you just focus on these tiny little details and it really kind of brings you out of your head. You know, it, it might sound a little like pseudoscience-y, but it's not this big spiritual thing. You're not connecting with the earth. You're not aligning your chakras or anything. You're not, you're just taking a minute to almost like manually reset your brain, if that makes sense. It helps work me down from being this kind of like over emotional, mushy mess to this kind of more rational and logical 
kind of person. So it would be when, when I was overthinking everything, when I was like questioning everything, when I was like thinking about, oh, this was a terrible thing I did. Oh, this might happen in the future and it's really bad. All these things, it kind of stops all of that. And I think, wait, no. And, and once I'm in that kind of like calmer, more rational state, I can actually start to ask myself the questions like, okay, what is making you feel like this right now? Is there anything I can do about it? And if there is, what are those things? What are my next steps here? Do I need to just take some time out? Or can I go ahead and carry on with whatever I was doing? Like, what do I need to do that's best for me? And you, you can't do that when you're in this like crazy emotional or like completely empty, depressed space. You need to kind of get yourself calm and in that ra uh, rational, logical place, which is a really hard thing to do. But by practicing like mindfulness techniques, it can really help get you to that place. So that's just my take on it. And I feel this whole like, you know, taking a moment to be in the present thing is a really important bit of advice. I just think the psychic twins kind of miss what it means and how it helps. Number two, meditate, listen to peaceful music. So this point, I guess, is just sort of the same as the first one, except with a sort of try distracting yourself element in there as well. Um, it's not always the easiest thing to do to just distract yourself. It's something that I found never worked for me because I found it very hard to concentrate on anything when I was in a kind of like low mood or a kind of more manic, panicky state. Uh, I found it really, really tough to watch TV or even listen to a whole song, anything like that. So this is something that it might work for you and, and give it a go. If it does, keep doing it. If not, don't worry about it, find something else. So yeah, I think this is like a decent bit of advice, but then they add this. Well, this is the thing. Uh, I just want to add that when you go to a therapist, they're not going to address the spiritual aspect of what you have unless they're specifically trained in spiritual therapy. We believe that meditation and prayer and connecting with a higher source or a higher power and friends who worship can really make the difference between life and death. So here they're just completely belittling therapists and scaring already vulnerable people by basically saying, oh, if you don't do this spiritual praying stuff, you'll probably kill yourself. No, you can't scare already vulnerable people like that. That's just wrong. Therapists are fantastic and wonderful and they do a world of good because they're trained to help you. They understand how to help you. And therapists aren't just this one size fits all thing. Sometimes you have to move around a bit and find the right therapist for you. But when you do, they can tailor a treatment plan specifically to you. And it's amazing and brilliant and wonderful. And it helps so much. We found that, you know, meditation and chanting not only changed our lives, it saved our lives. Mm -hmm. So we want to encourage you to seek out a spiritual path. You know, don't just, you know, turn to doctors or medications or drugs because yeah. there's so much more if you're willing to open up to a spiritual path. Yeah. Therapies like massage, acupuncture, yes. Reiki healing, uh, which is energy healing, can really lower your stress hormones. They then try and say, that you know you can do things instead like acupuncture and reiki and while there's no proof that any of that stuff works there's also no proof that it really does any harm however i would say do not choose that stuff over proper medication and a therapist please do not bypass a doctor or ignore your doctor in favor of pseudoscientific crap like reiki and you know whether you want to go down the kind of reiki path or not don't forego a doctor for it, please. You know, as, as someone with like a background in biomedical science, because that's what I originally studied at uni, I, I'm a big believer that a lot of mental health problems do have physiological reasons behind them. There's something happening in your brain or your body that's causing you to feel that way. And I think with proper treatment, everyone can get better, or at least everyone can manage their mental health in a way that will allow them to leave a great, happy, full life. And that's why I think therapy is also amazing. Because medication can really help, especially with like regulating the chemicals in your brain and stuff like that. Um, but therapy is something you can do kind of like proactively to help you. And um, you can change the neural pathways in your brain with hard work and practice and so on. And that's why therapists can really, really help you. I'm personally a big fan of cognitive behavioral therapy. I think it's a fantastic tool. Um, that benefits a hell of a lot of people. While we are on the subject of therapists, I do want to talk a little bit about betterhelp.com who are supporting this video today. Um, I guess you could say this is kind of like a little bit of an ad, but also it's something that I really, really believe in because I love what they do. So betterhelp.com is a website where you can speak to licensed therapists 24 hours a day. They have all these different ways that you can communicate with actual therapists no matter what your issue is. 
you do have to be over 18, but you can chat to these therapists via text, chat, phone, video, and within 24 hours of signing up, you can be talking to someone who can help you. Now I have to mention this isn't a crisis line, so if you are feeling suicidal, if you are feeling that you might hurt yourself or something like that, there are other people you can talk to. I'll leave some links below to people like the Samaritans who are fantastic and some other crisis helplines like that. Um, better help are more of a long-term solution than a kind of in the moment sort of thing, but I love what they do, they're amazing. For me, um, counsellors and therapists have always been a fantastic tool, but they've always been quite expensive. I remember once um, I saw a CBT counsellor who was like £90 a session, which is crazy. BetterHelp is really, really affordable. I think they have uh, sessions starting at like $35, so there's going to be something for everyone on there, no matter what your budget. And I think mental health is something you really want to invest in. As I mentioned, sometimes it takes you a little while to find the right counsellor for you, so BetterHelp do allow you to change counsellor and find the right one, which I think is really, really fantastic. Basically, it all works around you and sort of your schedule. You can schedule phone or video chats weekly or more often if that's what your therapist recommends. It's professional, it's affordable, and they do offer financial aid to some if you need it, which I think is really wonderful. And the final thing I want to mention is the fact that because this is all online, they're really great because no matter where you are, you can get the help that you need and they will specialise in what you need. So I come from like a tiny little market town up in South Yorkshire, and I know that like if I was up there, there aren't that many counsellors and therapists around, and if there were, they would be very difficult to get to, especially for someone like me who doesn't drive. So having an online service available would have been amazing to me when I was like an 18 year old angsty teenager who was just kind of like unsure what was going on in her brain and was like, why am I feeling like this? This stuff would have helped me so much if I could have got help and got medication and seen a therapist before it got to the bad point for me. I just want to say I was, I was so happy when BetterHelp approached me because I think they are fantastic, I think they're amazing and I love what they're doing and what they offer. I, I thoroughly encourage you to go, have a look at their website, have a look around and if you feel like signing up you can do. Um, there is a referral link which is betterhelp.com forward slash oats, that is O-A-T-E-S and if you sign up via that link it just helps support me and my channel a little bit. But mostly I just feel if you are having any mental health issues or things that you want to speak to a therapist about or anything else. Um, do what is best for you, do your research, and I think this is a fantastic option to consider. Anyway, back, back to the video that we were reacting to. The next two tips are actually about having a healthy diet and not overworking yourself, and I think these are really important tips. A healthy, balanced diet is something that can be very, very difficult, especially if you're in a kind of like depressed state with a low mood. I really, really struggled with eating and food when I was at my kind of like lowest point because I just, I didn't want to eat, and it, it was a big problem, but Having a good diet is something that really helps me now. It helps me maintain this kind of like good, stable, happy mood. I mean, seven to eight hours sleep is recommended for people. And if you can't get that, at least try to rest a little during the day. Oh, this tip as well. This one kind of annoys me because they just make it sound so simple. Like, oh, get enough sleep, yeah. No, especially when you do have like clinical depression, like I had, like it was diagnosed. Like one of my big problems or symptoms or whatever you want to call it was that I really struggled with sleep. I could not get to sleep like until I was completely exhausted and like passing out and then when I did sleep I would sleep for like 20 hours at a time because you know I'd just been awake for 48 and my sleep schedule was an absolute mess, I was an absolute mess and just being told to get enough sleep was not helpful at all. Thankfully I have a nice normal healthy sleep schedule now but for a long time it was an absolute mess and if someone just told me I'm just going to sleep. It would have made me so mad because I'd be like, it's not that simple. And then you feel like, oh, well, there must be something wrong with me if I can't sleep like a normal person, right? I'd get to the point where I was like actually scared to go to bed because I knew I'd just be like laid there for eight hours throughout the night and then I'd have to get up to work or uni the next day and, you know, I wouldn't have slept and I'd be like a zombie and just everything was bad and it was horrible and people just say, oh, well, can I just go to sleep? Like, it's not helpful. There are things you can do to help improve your sleep there are, th there are things you can do to help you get to sleep, and I think they're the important things worth talking about. For example, cutting out caffeine is a really big one, but it's also very difficult to do when you're not sleeping at night and have things to do throughout the day. Other things like making sure your bedroom is just for sleeping, um, so you kind of get into that state of being like, when you go into that room, you're like, yes, ready for bed. Again, impossible as a student because you have one room, right? I had my room for studying and living in and sleeping in and yeah it was 
impossible to have that. So again, that was really, really tough for me. Even when I lived in Oxford, I had a studio flat. So I had a bedroom, living room, a kitchen and a bathroom. It was three rooms, like, and I couldn't spend all my time in the kitchen because it was a tiny, tiny little thing. So again, that one was tough, but it is something you can do if you have a separate bedroom. Um, another thing that be can be quite useful is that there are these kind of like, what they call sort of like sleep sprays now, which is like, um, I have a little one that's like a lavender scented one that you spray on your pillow and apparently the scent is meant to make you sleepy and go to sleep. Personally that doesn't work for me, but I do find that if you spray a little bit on your pillow when you're feeling tired and sleepy, then smelling that in the future kind of gets you into that sleepy state of mind, so it's kind of like positive reinforcement, you know, kind of like Pavlovian. There's a great book by Richard Wiseman called Night School, all about kind of the science of sleep, and it's absolutely brilliant, and I recommend it. So pay attention to self-talk. It's what you say to yourself. It's a conversation that you have with yourself, either internally or uh, outwardly. Counter any negative thought with a positive one, if you can. If you catch yourself saying, I'm a loser, I'm trash, immediately stop and say, this is going to lead down the wrong path. Say, I am valuable, I'm important, I matter. Ah, <sighs> again. I mean, like, it, it sounds like a good tip, but it's just not that simple. And I think it's one of those things that's written by someone who never fully understands what it's like to live with kind of like major depression. Yeah, it's an important thing to try and do, but it's never just that easy as saying like, oh, you know what? I'm not gonna be mean to myself today. However, this is where I thoroughly recommend CBT. Cognitive behavioral therapy helps you recognize the kind of negative thought patterns that you have. Um, it helps you recognize when they're kind of arising, how they arise, and it helps you change them. CBT is a really great thing to do with a counsellor or therapist, but if you can't afford that, there is a great little book. Um, I think it's called something like My CBT Workbook, and um, it's kind of like, it's almost like a little activity book. And then you go through it and it helps you kind of work on changing your thought patterns to the more positive, helpful, useful, healthy thoughts instead of the negative sort of self-perpetuating negative cycle sort of thing that you normally have with depression and anxiety. I'm not very good with words today, am I? I think when it comes to like negative thoughts and stuff like that, the best piece of advice I've ever been given was from a counsellor who asked me, um, whenever I'd like say these negative things about myself or think them about myself, she'd turn around to me and say, would you say this to your best friend? And she said, if you wouldn't say this to your best friend, don't say it to yourself. And it's something that kind of like, really changed the perspective of everything for me and it kind of taught me more about caring about myself. So other than my Danny, um, my best friend is this guy called James and he's absolutely amazing. We met at uni, he's like a big brother to me and I love him to bits. And this one counsellor, um, she, she got me to kind of like list off characteristics that I felt about myself and then she got me to list off characteristics about James. And then she was like, okay, all these things that you're saying about yourself, would you say them to James? And I was like, hell no. And she was like, why not? And I was like, cause you know, he's not these things and me, me, me. Um, and she was like, yeah, but even if he was, would you say them to him? I'm like, no. And she was like, why? And I was like, cause I care about him. I don't want him to feel bad about himself. And she was like, so why do you want to feel bad about yourself? Why do you want you to feel bad about yourself? And I was like, I don't. And she was like, well then stop saying them. I was like, oh. I know it sounds silly, but it was, just a way of thinking about things that I never thought of before and it was kind of like the, the little kick or the push I needed to start working on being kinder to myself. So you know now now I do have these like certain rules for sort of like what I'll try and say to myself. So I'm like you know if it's something you can fix in the moment or something that's going to be useful like like I'd tell James if he had food in his teeth so I point out when I have food in my teeth. <laughs> you know that sort of thing. But you know I'd never call James a stupid unreliable idiot so now I refuse to call myself a stupid, unreliable idiot most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't work. It's something I'm still working on, but I'm getting there. It, it's just kind of like about recognizing these patterns and trying to change them, and over time, it does get easier. Yet yeah, then the Psychic tw Twins make some other decent points, like avoiding social media at times, um, that's something I do try and do if I'm having like a bad time. And I sometimes have my down days now, not too many of them, but if I do have them or I have like, um, sort of like a really bad like anxiety buildup, then I will just take sometimes just 24 hours out of social media, sometimes a bit longer, um, you know, other than looking at puppies on Instagram, I don't really use it. Um, so I do try and do that, that can be useful. Avoiding alcohol and drugs, yeah, that's really useful as well, especially if you're on medication. So like, I shouldn't really drink with the medication I'm on, but you know, having a glass of wine with a meal every now and again isn't really a bad thing. And of course, 
alcohol is a depressant, a lot of drugs are depressants, or a lot of drugs can make you more manic, so just avoiding those things can be really useful. And make sure that you laugh, because laughter is the best medicine. You know, watch a funny movie or video, watch our videos with Shane, and you will laugh your ass off. Uh, laughter really is very, very healing. Yes. Laugh. Laughter makes everything better, because when you're sat in bed and you haven't changed your clothes in three days and you've just hurt yourself again and you haven't been able to go to school or work and you haven't seen people in two weeks and you're crying and you don't know what to do and you hate yourself, just turn on some stand-up comedy and laugh. Makes everything better, doesn't it? I get it, just, it makes me so mad because it's like they don't really understand what something like depression is. They're just, they're talking about ways to combat low mood. A low mood is nothing like depression. They're entirely different, you know, feeling a bit sad, having a low mood, that is something you can snap out of. That is something where you can just turn on a funny film and things all seem better. But depression is different. It's not just feeling sad for an hour or two. It's this constant state. And often it's like a feeling of nothingness or emptiness. And you can't just snap out of that. You can't just laugh your way out of it. And I know that sounds dark and bleak, but they're just, they're oversimplifying. I just, I don't really think they understand what they're talking about, and it does annoy me a bit. That's not to say, like, don't watch a happy film if it's going to make you feel better, you know, do that. Um, but just don't expect it to be a miracle cure. And if you do feel better for a few hours, that's great, that's amazing. But that doesn't just mean your depression will be gone, you know. And, and if you do feel bad again afterwards, like, don't feel bad about that, if that makes sense, I know that sounds stupid, but like, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It makes you normal, it just means it's gonna take a little bit more time, a little bit more work, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, again, and then they have a few little other bits of decent advice, like getting some exercise, speaking to a counsellor, <clears throat> better help. Write down some of your feelings if it helps. Um, don't be afraid to speak to your friends about how you're feeling. Yep, again, really good advice there. Um, talking to other people can really help, and just explaining to them how you're feeling. Telling people that you have any kind of like a mental health problem can be really, really scary, but there shouldn't be any stigma around it. It shouldn't be something you're ashamed of. You shouldn't be afraid to talk to the people that you care about. Sometimes the hardest thing for me is just saying like, hey, I know we made plans, I'm having a really bad day, can we reschedule? Um, but sometimes I have to do it because it's better than going out and having a panic attack on the train or something like that. Um, and I think if you're just open and honest with the people you care about, it can go a long way to helping you feel better. And like that, that was something I struggled with for a long time because I still haven't kind of like explicit, explicitly told my parents or sister that I had any of these issues. And so like there were kind of really tough times. Like I remember I went up to Peniston one Christmas and Christmas day was fine. I coped okay then. Boxing day, it just, it hit me. And I just, I had this terrible day and I couldn't get out of bed. I just could not bring myself to get out of bed. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to get dressed. I didn't want to do anything. So I stayed in bed for the entirety of Boxing Day until about 8pm and then when I finally got up everyone was really mad at me for staying in bed and I wish I could have just told them like, look, I'm having a really crappy day, don't be mad at me. But instead they all just thought I was lazy and they all just thought I was being like antisocial and they all just thought like I didn't care about seeing them and stuff and that wasn't the case at all and I wish I could have been more open and honest with them because it really would have helped. But instead I just ended up feeling more crappy and going straight back to bed, and then like, yeah, it, it was horrible. So talk to people, it can really help and will really help, and I am now, at this point in my life, um, I'm trying to be more honest with people and open with people, and you know, especially on my channel here, I'm just a bit of an open book who just talks. This is more of like stream of consciousness than anything planned, and um, yeah. Thanks for putting up with that. Anyway, um, that's, that's pretty much me done, that's pretty much the Psychic Twins video done. And again, their video just leaves a very kind of weird, bitter taste in my mouth because I feel like they don't understand the difference between depression and low mood, which I think is a very important distinction to make. They do recognise that, you know, mental health issues shouldn't have a stigma around them, which I completely support, and I think that's true. Um, however, I also don't think we should glamorise depression or anxiety or anything else. Um, I don't think we should romanticise it. I don't think we should make it something you aspire to have. That's not the case at all, because I think that might stop some people getting the help that they need, and I think that would be a real shame. I think things like counselling and therapy are things that we should encourage more people to look at, and I think with websites like BetterHelp, I, I know I'm kind of pushing them a lot, but I do really believe in them, um, I think with websites like that, they do make 
counselling and therapy more affordable and more accessible to more people. I, I just, I think that's a fantastic thing. And I just, I think when you've got an audience as young as the Psychic Twins do, you have to be very careful with how you talk about such serious issues. When you talk about mental health, like, the audience is usually vulnerable and impressionable. And you can't make it seem like this wonderful thing. You've got to talk about it seriously. And you've got to make sure that people understand that, like, often this is a physical illness. Even if it's going, you know, even if, you know, the, the manifest is in your head or whatever. Like, there is a physiological reason for it. And you can't just get better by doing acupuncture and watching a funny film. Often you might need medication, often you might need to work hard, but it's also important to mention that recovery is completely possible. And even though I've had these horrible low points in my life, um, I'm in a really good place right now. And I fully believe that everyone else can get in a good place as well. Yeah, this is a long video. I'm kind of rambling now. I don't wanna to sound too preachy or anything. And again, I'm not like an expert. I'm just a person who's been through this myself, so. That's kind of all I can offer on this. But yeah, shutting up now. Please let me know what you thought of this video. In my last video, I asked you about your experiences with multi-level marketing schemes. And so my shout out goes to Sarah Huffman who said, my brother was trapped in Amway for years and it was ruining his life. Luckily his wife got him out. Good on her. Uh, my mum has fallen for these over and over again, mainly Norwex and essential oils. I, I don't know what Norwex is. Um, but she tried to cure my scoliosis with oils. Uh, I think this is just kind of like a typical example of how people can fall for these and how it can be really damaging and dangerous and how people can lose money. It's, it's a real shame. Thank you for sharing that, Sarah. I really appreciate it. If you want to shout out in my next video, please leave me a comment below. Let me know what is your kind of number one tip for dealing with depression or anxiety or any other mental health issue that you face or anything like that or that you've heard helps other people. Thank you so much for watching today, especially if you've made it this far. I really do appreciate you guys and I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this, you can check out more from me on the Here and How podcast. There's a link on this end screen. I also have merch available now if you want to check it out. There is a link in the description below. And I absolutely love, love, love all my designs. So please go check them out. I'm really, really pleased with them. Also, a huge, huge thank you goes out to everyone who's supporting this channel on Patreon this month. You guys are all incredible. An extra big special thank you and a hug goes out to Gambit and Chauffeur, Dave Sean, Mark Dana, Christian Berg, Rachel B. Royer, Jaden Shepard, Pixelated to Skeptic, Jaylee Moore, Religion is BS, Sir Michael Moore, Matthew Minamar, Pete D. Gibbs, and Greg Ladd. And to everyone else who is shown on this end screen and mentioned down in the description below, thank you so much. You guys are incredible.